Okay, guys, let's look at the idea of heat lost equals heat gained. And so uh, if you remember uh, the equation that we know for heat is Q equals MC delta T, where Q is equal to heat. And if you have, uh, the, the idea here is that if you have two objects <clears throat> that are in contact with each other, and one object is hot and the other object is cold, then heat is going to flow from the hot object to the cold object. <clears throat> and the amount of heat that the hot object loses is going to be equal to the amount of heat that the cold object gains. So heat lost equals heat gained. And so the, the one important thing here is you have to thermally insulate this so that the heat can only go from the hot object to the cold object. We don't lose heat to the other surroundings. But the basic idea is heat loss equals heat gained. <clears throat> and so you can substitute in for uh, the Q, the MC delta T. And so you can have MC delta T is equal to MC delta T. <clears throat> now, direction of heat flow is important here, and we're going to learn that uh, when an object loses heat, its heat content decreases, and when an object gains heat, its heat content increases. And so the heat lost is going to have a negative sign because we're losing heat um, for that substance. So negative MC delta T equals MC delta T is going to be um, how we write that equation. So let's do an example. Okay, and so here is a question. So a 10 gram piece of metal at 100 degrees is placed into 75 grams of water at 25 degrees. The temperature of the water increases to 27 and a half degrees. What is the specific heat con uh, capacity of the metal? So let me kind of draw for you the scenario here. So you have a, um, a cup full of water, and the mass of that water is 75, uh, is, uh, 75 grams. <clears throat> it's also at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and we know that it's got a heat capacity or C value of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. You take this piece of metal um, that weighs 10 grams, so let's put a little piece of metal in there, weighs 10 grams, and the temperature of the metal is 100 degrees Celsius. And so what is going to happen? Well, the metal is going to release heat to the water, okay? The temperature of the water is going to increase because it's absorbing the heat energy. The temperature of the metal is going to decrease because it's losing heat energy. And the water is going to increase and the metal is going to decrease until they are the same temperature. When they reach thermal equilibrium, that's when it's going to stop. And so an important idea within this question to understand is the temperature of the water increases to 27.5 degrees. Well, what does that mean about the temperature of the metal? That means that if the, if the water stops going up at 27.5 degrees, that means the metal came down to 27.5 degrees, and so they meet at 27.5 degrees Celsius. And so that's an important idea that you need to keep in mind for this kind of a problem. And so you really have everything that you need to solve this question as long as you can interpret everything correctly. So this is a uh, heat lost equals heat gained, or you could do heat gained equals heat loss, it doesn't really matter. And so this is going to be negative MC delta T equals MC delta T. And so what is losing heat? Well, that's the metal. So the mass of the metal is 10 grams, so negative 10 grams. Uh, the C of the metal is our unknown, that's what we're looking for, the heat capacity of the metal. And the delta T, the T final, was 27 and a half, and the T initial was 100. So delta T is always going to be TF minus TI. <clears throat> and then the mass of the water was 75 grams. The heat capacity of the water is 4.18. I'm running out of room, so I may not write all the units here. Joules per gram degree Celsius, this is grams there. And the delta T for the water was, it started at, uh, or it ends at 27 and a half, and it started at 25, so 27 and a half minus 25. When you do this left side over here, you're going to get uh, 725 times C, and over here you're going to get 783.75, so then divide by the 725. 
and C is equal to 1.08. Trust me on the units here, joules per gram degree Celsius. The units will all work out to the units of joules per gram degree Celsius in this case. And so that is one way to find the heat capacity of a substance. And the idea of placing a metal at one temperature into water at a different temperature and observing the delta T of the water, which also gives you the final temperature of the metal, is an easy lab setup, and we're going to do this in class. So let's do one more example. So 50 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius added to 75 grams of water at 85 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the mixture? And so, or of the two waters combined. And so this is a, a little bit different, but it's the same kind of a problem. It is a heat loss equals heat gained problem. So Q loss equals Q gained negative MC delta T equals MC delta T. Now, you're going to need to substitute in for delta T in this case, because we want to know actually T final. So that's going to become negative MC times TF minus Ti equals MC times TF minus Ti. Okay, and now we're just going to plug in. So this is the loss side, heat lost on this side. So that's the object that was warmer. So it has 75 uh, grams as its mass, so negative 75 grams. We're just going to multiply this negative by the mass. It's the easiest way to deal with it usually. Heat capacity of water is 4.18. I'm not going to do units here, but you should be keeping track of units, joules per gram degree Celsius. The T final is our unknown. The initial temperature of this was 85 degrees Celsius. And then the heat gained, the mass of that was uh, the 50 grams of water. Heat capacity of that is 4.18. And the T final, minus the initial temperature of 25. Okay, now this is just an algebraic solution at this point. Um, 75 times 4.18, and then distribute that to the TF and the negative 85. 50 times 4.18, distribute that. Group your terms. Okay, so when you distribute, you get this. Now you're going to group your terms. The easiest to add the 313.5 to both sides. And then add the 5225 to both sides. And then divide by your 522. And that's equal to 61 degrees Celsius as our T final. Now, you ought to be able to do a quick logic check. Uh, is 61 degrees Celsius in between 25 and 85? Yes, it is. You can even do a quick little check on, you know, is it more towards the 50 grams or 75 grams? It's more towards the 75. It should be closer to the water that had more mass. And so that's your T final. And so those are two heat loss uh, versus uh, heat gained kind of problems that you're likely to see.